Okay, so looking at this task six, um, it says it's about current voltage characteristic and we have a series connection of five components and at different points um, we have potentials given and for two different cases, if there's a short circuit between two points A and F and if there's a six ohm resistance between two points A and F. And so now what we should calculate is what are the values of these components there and what would be the voltage to be expected at this terminals A and F if there would be an open circuit between um, these two terminals. <laughs> so what would you do? Do you have an idea to solve this task? And what we have given is potential. What could we calculate from a potential? And also hello to the two persons watching on Twitch. Uh, maybe you have some idea, write something in the chat. Wh what, what can we do with potential? What was, uh, if you remember yesterday, what we discussed, if we have two potentials, if we calculate the difference between th them, what do we get? We get voltage. So, um, from from each potential difference, we can calculate the voltage. So let's let's calculate voltages. So um, so we could calculate voltages um, for these two cases for um, for short circuit and for this six ohm. And so if we do so the voltage UAB, or um, I, would, I should rather write maybe VAB. So in this case, uh, we take the potential of A minus the potential of B. Um, if we take minus 10, minus 14, what do we get? Minus 10, 24, right? Minus 24, the unit is volt. So if we continue, uh, v, B, C, the difference between these two points, what is 14 minus 8? This is 6 volt. If we continue the voltage between C and D, 8 uh, minus minus 4 <coughs> is 12 volt. The next voltage between D and E, um, minus 4, minus minus 6 is 2 volt. And the last one between E and F is 4. Okay, so now if we do it for the second case, for the 6 ohm, I, I won't write all the quantities once again. I just will write um, equals. Yeah, so um, you know what I mean with this. Um, it, it's, it's, it's of course, yeah. So here we get the same value. Here we get also minus 24 volt. Um, then for BC, what voltage do we get in this case? Just three volt. The next one from here to here, from this point to this point, is also 12. The next one, one is just one. And the last one two. is just two. Okay, and um, yeah, so if we would also calculate the very last one back from F to A, if there's a short circuit between them, of course, short circuit means there is no voltage. Voltage is zero. And for the last case, um, we have minus 4, minus minus 10 is 6 volt. Okay, so now from the potential, 
in this table given in volt, we have calculated potential differences named voltages in volt. For these two different cases, if we have a short circuit and if we have 6 ohm. So if I, mm, yeah, if I would draw some circuit schematic out of this, um, let's say we have this point A here at the top and then we have, um, as you can see, we have five voltage drops, so we have five components. We don't know what these components are, so I will write, uh, I will draw something um, that is no real element. Uh, it's something unknown, something that we don't know yet, but it's there in the circuit and it creates, it gives us a voltage drop. So five of these unknown elements and here at the bottom there is F and here we have potential B, C, D and E. And the voltages that we have just calculated are these ones here, from A to B, from uh, B to C, from C to D, from D to E and from, um, here's the voltage missing, from E to F. And we have these two different cases. Maybe I can use different colors for them. So we have this short circuit case here, which is also um, this one. And the short circuit would mean, okay, we have really a short circuit between A and F. And then we have this other case, maybe in light blue with the six ohm which is this one here. And this would mean instead of the short circuit, we have a resistor with six ohm given or connected between these two terminals A and F. This is um, R A F with six ohm. Okay, and so now, what are the other components? Uh, what values do they have? And what should we get if we have a last case um, that would be like this, that there's just some open circuit between these two ports or between these two terminals A and F. Any ideas for this? What do you think? What options do we have for these components? What could they be? What, what elements do we know so far? Resistor? It could be resistors. Or what else can we have? Voltage sources. Okay, so there could be resistors and voltage sources. So if we have a voltage source, what does the voltage source do with the voltage? It, it fixes the voltage. If we have a voltage source, there should be always the same voltage because the, the definition of a voltage source is a voltage source is an element that has a fixed voltage and does not care about current. So no matter which current do you have, it will always have the very same voltage, at least some ideal voltage source. And, <coughs> and if we have a resistor, so yeah, um, it, it could be a voltage source as discussed and for the voltage source this voltage would be fixed, would be constant. And the other option that we have is it could be some resistor and we also have a voltage drop across this resistor um, which depends on this current and what could I write down as an equation for the um, voltage drop across the resistor, just Ohm's law, so R times I or I times R, um, something like this. 
And so what happens between these two different cases, if I have a short circuit or if I connect some additional resistance to the circuit, if I have more resistance in a circuit, what should happen with the current? The current should go down, the current should decrease. <coughs> and if the current decreases, then also all the voltages or all the voltage drops across resistors should decrease. So we can check if the voltage between the green case and the blue case remains the same, then this will be some voltage source, like here and here. So this one and this one, this is a voltage source. Uh, maybe I can, I don't have too many different colors left, I think so. So, but let's say um, this is the voltage source, then this and this, they would be voltage sources. And this element um, is the resistor where the voltage changes with respect to current. And so these three elements, they would be resistors. So our real circuit, if I try to sketch this here on top, this is a resistor, this is a resistor, and this is a resistor. And these other, the other two elements, this is a voltage source, and this is also some voltage source. Okay, so then the for sure, for the, for the voltage sources, it's clear um, this is also the value of the voltage source, 24 volts and or minus 24 volts and 12 volts. Then the question is, okay, how large are these resistors here? What would be the value or how can I calculate the value of this resistance BC, the resistance DE and the resistance EF? Any ideas for this? The current, is the, same. the current should be the same through each of these elements because we just have a series connection. Okay, so of course I could write something. This is the voltage BC divided by the current. And here I could write a similar equation, a similar equation, the voltage DE divided by the current, the voltage E F divided by the current. Mm. And the current here and here and here will be the same, for sure. Mm. Question is, okay, if I want to calculate this resistance, I need to have some value for the current. So how can I get the current in this? And there's some idea? Maybe some output Yeah, we know in this case here, we know this is this this is the voltage drop across the six ohm resistor. So we also have um, we know here that this is six volt, and if we have a six volt voltage drop across a six ohm resistor, then we know the current in this case, and the current can be calculated by. 6 over 6, but uh, w which which 6 is on top and which 6 is at the bottom? Voltage. Yeah, voltage, voltage divided by current. So we get 6 volt divided by 6 ohm. Remember, ohm is volt divided by ampere. So we can replace this, cancel the volts, and we get 6 ampere for the, uh, we get 1 ampere for the current, because also 6 will cancel with 6. Okay, so we get 1 ampere for the current. And this means now if we have um, a 3 volt voltage drop, what? Six, 3 volt and 1 ampere of current, what resistance do we get? 3 ohm. So this should be a 3 ohm resistor. Um, this should be, if we have just 1 volt of voltage drop, this should be a 1 ohm resistor and this should be a 2 ohm resistor. So we have 1 ohm here and 2 ohms over there. Okay, so we have successfully um, determined these components and this is 
yeah, minus 24 volt, or I could also say this is 24 volt pointing upwards, and here it would be 12 volt voltage source pointing downwards. And then the remaining question is, in this orange case, if we just have an open circuit between the two ports or two terminals um, A and F, what, what open source voltage would, should we get here? From here to here in this case. Yeah, and how, how can we calculate this or how can I write it down? Um, yeah, I would not really say parallel law because um, it's not, it, it's still a serious connection. There's no, no parallel connection there. But, or yeah, maybe we could also call this a parallel connection, but I would rather say we, we would need to set up a Kirchhoff's voltage law for this whole loop. And if we have an open circuit, what does it mean for the current? Sum is equal to zero. Yeah, the, the cur if we have an open circuit, th there can be no current. So this <laughs> means, in this case, for the open circuit, uh, is m it means the, the current is zero. So if the current is zero, what does it mean for the voltage drop across all the resistances or across all the resistors? Zero. They are also zero. So this was a resistor, so here the voltage would be zero, here the voltage would be zero, here the voltage would be zero. Still, we would have the very same voltages across our voltage sources. And so, um, yeah, we have minus 24 from here to here or 24 in the up opposite direction, but let's say if we go from A to F, because here it's, wh what voltage is to expected at the terminus A and F, um, an open circuit, or maybe it should be better between the terminus, okay? Um, yeah, so if we go from A to F, we have minus 24 and we have plus 12, so at the end, our our voltage from A from F to A should be also 12 volts. So if we go from mm, wait, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused now. Um, if we go from yeah, if we go from okay, and and in the opposite way around, um, I will explain it in a second. Then this one should be the opposite direction should be minus 12 volt, right? So if we check, if we go from this point, from A to F, if we go this way, we go along minus 24 plus 12 will be minus 12. If we go from here to here this way, we also end up with minus 12. Um, and for example, if we would do a full loop, so we have 24 volt. Um, in this case here, we have, as we just discussed, we have 12 volt in this direction, uh, or we also have minus 12 volt in the opposite direction. So if we start here, we have 24, then we have minus 12, and we have another minus 12, so we end up with zero. Which, which somehow makes sense. Or we could also say, okay, if we go um, from B to A this along this way, we have 24 volts. And if we go from B to A the other way, we have 12 volts plus another 12 volts um, is also 24. So the open circuit um, voltage between these two terminals should be minus 12 volt if we count it in this direction, if we count it in the opposite direction from F to A, it should be plus 12 volts. And this should be the solution of this task. So um, from potentials, we calculate voltages. If the voltage stays the same, should be a voltage source. If the voltage changes, 
because the current changes, then it should be a resistor. And if we have open circuit, there's no current at all. So we have no voltage drop across the resistors. So we, we just need to take into account the voltage, the remaining voltage sources in this case. And there's a question. Where, where do we get the 6 volt here from? Um, which, which 6 volt? Uh, near, to the near to the resistor. This one here? Yeah. yeah, this is the same 6 volt as here. So th th this 6 volt is the same 6 volt here. And I got it by um, calculating, by, by taking the difference between minus 4 and minus minus 10. So minus 4, the, the voltage between the <coughs> points F and A. So minus 4, minus minus 10 is minus 4 plus 10, and this is 6. And so we have 6 volt between these two terminals, in this case with the 6 ohm resistance. So we have a 6, ohm, a 6 volt voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor, which will give us this 1 ampere of current. Do you have something to add? More questions? Did Professor Fick already send you his slides? No. Uh, the, the, some lecture slides? He uploaded all of them. He uploaded all of them. There should be a corresponding example also in the lecture slides, where there is some diagram with where you can see how the voltage, let's say, goes up and down and up and down and up and down with, because every source increases the voltage at least if it's pointing in the right direction, let's say, and every resistor decreases voltage. And if you have this short circuit at the end, uh, you should end up with the very same or potential that you started with. And there was another question. The, this minus here? Yeah. Um, OK, so to explain this minus, as said, we would need to write down a Kirchhoff's voltage law for the whole loop. And so if I do this, um, let's take a different color. So if we write down uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law for, for this whole loop for this open circuit case, um, then we could say, OK, we, I, I think the simplest way to write it down is if we, we go from point A to F, we go along this way, and if we go along this way, we have voltage A, B. Um, this voltage is gone, this voltage is gone, and this voltage is gone because we have no current, and therefore we have no voltage drop across the resistors. So the only remaining voltage is this one here, the, wo the one from the other voltage source. So we have V, A, B plus V, C, D. These are the two voltages that we have on this side if we go along this way. And now we check on the other way. If I go across this open circuit, the only voltage that I have there is voltage AF. And so now I can insert these values and say uh, VAB is minus 24 volts. The VCD is plus 12 volts. So as said, the sum is um, minus 12. And so VAF is minus 12 volts. This is what we just calculated. And that's why we get minus. And now if you, um, if you invert the direction, if you take the voltage in the opposite direction, like here, this one, what we have written down here was VFA. If you invert the direction, then you also invert the sign. This is wh what we also discussed yesterday. Yeah, and you could write down, as I said, you could write down this Kirchhoff's voltage law in many different, we, we could also say that um, we, 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 we start from this point and we do one full loop. So if we start at this point and go this way, 
Um, so then we have V, so if we write down another Kirchhoff's voltage law. And if we start at this point, go this way. So then we have VAB plus this VCD. And so then we are here, and then we go back again. And if we go along this way, uh, then it would be VFA, right? Because we go from F to A. So plus VFA, and this at the end should be zero because we have done a full loop. This is what Kirchhoff's voltage law says. And so now if we insert the values, we can check VAB, this is this one here, is minus 24. This one, VCD, is 12. And VFA is another 12. So minus 24 plus 12 plus 12 is really zero. <coughs> Perfectly makes sense. And so you could, you could check it in many different ways. You should always get the very same result. There should be no contradiction somewhere in your argumentation or in your formulas. If, if there is one, um, then you have some mistake somewhere. <coughs>